Uh, today, it's going to be a little bit special kasi tuturo ko kayo ng probability on steroids. Dahil gagawa tayo ng probability, magkukunod tayo ng probability from simple probability all the way to two-way table probability. And if you want to know more about probability, just stick around. At manood kayo ng video ko. Keep it. Okay. So, this is how dependent becomes independent. So, let's have another example of this particular rule in probability. Standard deck of cards. Now, Answering probability on a standard deck of cards is going to be tricky if you don't know your standard deck of cards. Let's keep it simple. What's the probability of getting a face card? What we know is that the denominator is not going to change. It's 52. We just need to figure out the number of success. Face cards, there are four suits, right? How many face cards? Three. King, Queen, Jack. Twelve out of fifty-two. All right. Okay. Let's have another one. What's the probability that when you pick a card, the card that you will pick is a number? less than So what is the probability that when you pick a card it's going to be a number card but it needs to be less than 5 16. Numbers less than 5 are 2, two, two three, 3 and 4, and four. Yes. There are 3 numbers that's less than 5 And how many suits? 4 <laughs> <laughs> What's it 3 times 4? 12 <laughs> That is why probability can be extremely simple or frustratingly confusing. <laughs> That's why it's, in, I mean, it's extremely important that you know your sample space really well and you need to be able to visualize it because probability is easy when you're visualizing the sample space. And that's basically the importance of our lesson or workshop today. Understanding that you really just need to know your sample space and whatever question that is given to you involving probability is going to be a lot easier and less frustrating. Right? So keep that in mind because you're going to be seeing a lot of sample spaces again. Okay, answer this. Drawing two kings from a deck of cards. All right, deck of cards. Mm -hmm. I pick a card. Mm -hmm. It's a king. Mm -hmm. I pick another card. It's another king. Did you bring the first king back? No. Did I return it? No. All right. Let's have another scenario that is the same as this probability. Standard deck of cards. One, two, two cards. Hmm. They're kings. All right. Give me the probability of that happening. Let's begin. All right. So, is this a dependent event or independent event? Dependent. dependent, because the first card you pick is dependent. I mean, the second card that you're going to pick is dependent on the first card that you pick, right? So this one is a dependent event, which means the sample space, sample space is going to change. Because the probability of getting the first king is what? 14. 4 out of 52. But what about the probability of getting the second king? Is it also going to be 4 out of 52? No. No, because assuming that you pick the card that is a king, there are only 51 cards left and three kings, right? I mean, theoretically. That's why sometimes it's called theoretical probability because we just need to be mindful of the theories to be able to answer this problem. And then, is this an end or an or operation? And because they need to be exactly king-king, right? One king and another king. Oh, I said one king and another king, right? Yes, that's right. So, you're going to... Multiply. So you're going to multiply for this particular probability to happen. So 4 out of 52 times 3 out of 51 is going to be a big number in fraction form. But in decimal form, it's going to be 0 0.0045, which is how much in percent form? 0.45%. It's not even 1%. So the probability that you will get two kings when you pick a card, oh, when you pick two kings from a standard deck of cards is really, really small. All right, so this is how we compute for this particular dependent event on 
drawing a um, standard deck of cards, 0.45% is the probability of getting two kings. So if I come up with different problems involving standard deck of cards, you should know how to formulate it. Another example would be what's the probability that when you pick three cards, Okay. What's the probability when you pick three cards, it's going to be a number card, a face card, and an ace? Ooh, this is exciting. Probability that it will be a face, a number, How many numbers are there? and an ace. Oh, two, two, nine, two right? three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's Just give, yeah, give me your answer in fraction form and give me your answer in decimal form so we can um, visualize the percentage of this particular event happening. Okay, give me the first fraction. Getting a face is... Because when you asked this, you said number face. But, but it, it doesn't really matter because the denominator is... Yeah. yeah, right? What about the number cards? 36 out of 52. Yeah. 52. Oh, so you're going... Oh, I did it. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did that one first. As long as it's changing. Yeah. What about ace? It's 4 out of 50. Yeah. Now, does it matter if the denominators are changing on each of the events? No. Because no, because multiplication is multiplying the top and multiplying the bottom, and it's commutative, yeah. so your answer will still be the same. All right. What's the fraction form? 1728. 1728 divided by 132600. 132600. Yes. Oh my god. And what is it in decimal? Point? 0 0.013. 0.013? Yeah. So about. 1. Oh. So the probability of this happening is more likely than getting two kings huh. in a standard of cards. Wow. What do you mean, wow? <laughs> We just computed it, right? <laughs> what is so amazing about it? We already know that. <laughs> so that is why you need to know your sample space because probability and statistics is really fun if you know your rules and you can visualize the sample space. And the more you visualize your sample space, the easier it gets. Got it? And also, make sure that you're understanding the question because if you don't, <laughs> like, nice. am I... Replacing the card? Is it one at a time or is it three and one go? It doesn't matter, right? Okay, now another form of probability that you need to learn in AP statistics is answering probability in table form. Because probability is not just theoretical or classical probability which involves flipping a coin, drawing a card. Sometimes it's on real situation. Most of the time it is used in uh, survey form. All right. So this is an example of a survey. So they asked this many women and asked about their status, marital status. And they come up with a table like so. So let's say they asked 250 women and they asked if she's never married, married, widowed, and divorced. And they count the number of women who answered this, 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 and that, and then divided it by the total. Got it? Yes. And now they have... A probability model. This is called a probability, if I can spell, probability model. And another term that we use for this probability model is one way table. Because it's just one way. And to be able to verify if a probability model is a legit probability model, which is a question in AP stats. How are you going to verify if it's a legitimate probability model? You add it together and if it equals 1 or 100%. All right. So if it's equal to 1 or approximately equal to 1, then it is a legitimate probability model. Now that we know, is this a legit probability model? Probably. Let's just say yes because we don't have time anymore. But yes, this is a legitimate probability model. And let's answer a probability um question like this. What's the probability that when you select a woman from this particular probability model, it's a woman that's not married? What's the probability that in this group of women, that particular woman that you pick or choose is a woman that is not married? Okay, not married. Is not married the same as never married? No. No, of 
course no. This is the challenge in statistics or probability question. When you try to reason out or justify a thought that you think is right, when you are just specifically just being asked to answer this particular question, right? Okay, there are two ways on how to answer this problem. One way is what we call as the complement of an event. Do you, do you know what complement oh, is? it's the knot. Yeah. It's the knot. It is the missing part of a whole, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, the operative word is married. And we have married, which is happy to be not married, right? Mm -hmm. That's one way of answering this particular problem. This is one way of answering it. What is another way of answering it? Adding them all up. 0 0.298 plus 0 0.005 plus 0 0.075. So, again, this is how you are formulating your event in your head and how you're going to execute your answer. Both of them will give you the same result, right? Which is what? Point what? And it is point three seven eight. All right, same probability model, but this time I want you to compute for a person that's never married or divorced. What's the probability that we're going to be selecting that particular person in this question? How do you write it with like the notation? With the notation? Like the U in or the intersection and, and the union yeah. or is you yeah. or is union letter U intersection is and right. what's the answer so basically you're going to be working on the probability of never married which is this one and add it to the probability of a woman that is divorced and then you add them up, and that is the answer to your probability question. Boom, boom, boom. So therefore, there are 37.3% of women in the group that are either never married or divorced. Got it? Okay, recap. So far, we did classical or theoretical probability. We did one-way table. We did independent and dependent events. Now, we're working on two-way tables. All right. Now, how do you construct a two-way table? A two-way table needs to have two variables. For example, let's create a two-way table right now. There are only six of you. Lace, not lace. What? Shoelaces. She's only one. She's still the only one. I'm special. And let's say. I'm the only one. So this is an example of a two-way table because we have two variables, type of cell phones and type of shoes you're wearing, right? All right, let's start with lace and iPhone. Who is wearing shoes with lace and has an iPhone? Four plus one? Three plus two? Five. Okay. Legitimate. Oh. All right. So why is this important that you know how to work on probability questions involving two-way table? Because I'm curious. Like this. What's the probability that if I select student in this group, it will be a student with an iPhone? Uh, three no. out of five. iPhone is three out of five. And that is correct. What about the probability of a student iPhone or laced shoes. How are we going to compute for a student who happens to have an iPhone or shoes with shoelaces? So it's addition, right? Yes. So all you need to do is to add all the person who happens to have an iPhone and laced shoes. What are the, um, yeah, what are those people? Three and four. iPhone? Two and one. iPhone, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lace? Four. So what's that? Five out of? Five. 
Is that true that all of you have laces and I and or iPhone? Negative or oh, but one of them is wearing no. One plus two plus two. two. Right? Oh, I, okay. Because it's an or. Okay, okay, it's okay. either someone with an iPhone or shoelaces. Is I, that correct? I, I, if I choose someone here, one of you will have either lace. Either lace Oh, oh, okay, never mind. I was adding Either. that one twice. And this is why you need to know your language in probability and statistics. Because what's the difference if my question is probability of iPhone or and lace shoes? Both conditions. Both. So it will be lace and iPhone, right? And the intersection is 2. So if it's an end operation, it's an intersection. Now you're understanding the symbol is connected to the formula. So, so it's 2 out of? 2 out of? 5. five. Which makes sense. The end operation is always smaller probability than an OR operation, right? Because the OR operation, 100%. End operation, it's going to be 2 out of 5. Union? Intersection. <laughs> Alright, so now that you're learning too much from me, let's give a better two-way table. So this one is a two-way table. So they took a survey in a certain university and they asked around if the students have ear piercing or no ear piercing. With ear piercing or no ear piercing. Either male or female, right? Yes. Right? Because male can wear earrings, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Why don't it's... you have any? <laughs> I used to. <laughs> All right. So, let's compute for this probability. Well, thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Spronza. And if you happen to like this video, if you like you not, share your math videos so that you can learn more about the kids and the kids. See you again next time. Bye. Chicken. 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 Chicken.